Hi, I'm Cecilia. Welcome to the study of Genesis. For more of me, find me on my Facebook, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, and then my website. With them, you know more of who I am and what I stand for. Previously, in the study of Genesis, we looked at uh, Moses being asked by God to go to the mountain in Moreb, Moreb and uh, sacrifice his own son Isaac. And we saw that he did obey the word of God and he went out with his son and two servants and they went a three days journey to the Mount of Moreb. Moreb. And after that, he left the two servants on the, on the slope of the mountain and they, is it on the slope? On the base of the mountain, and they continue on, continued on forward with Isaac and uh, the the knife and the fire and the wood to up uh, up the hill to sacrifice um, to sacrifice uh, Isaac as his son. And we know that Isaac also asked his father, like, "I see the wood, I see the fire. Where is the lamp?" And Moses told, not Moses, Abraham. Abraham told his son Isaac that God will provide, and that is where we left last week. So this week we're going to look at Genesis chapter 22, verses 9 to 24, and uh, see what happened next. Now, after now, Isaac and his father Abraham now were the only two people going up the hill. And um, actually, it is the land of Moriah, not Moreb, Moriah. Yes, and it says... When they came to the place of which God had told them, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that Seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket, in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And, and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply you, multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sun that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to, to, to his young men and they rose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham lived at Beersheba. Now after these things, it was told to Abraham, Behold, Milka also has born children to your brother Nahor, Uz, his firstborn Booz, his brother Kemuel, the father of Aram, Chest, Hazo, Pildash, Jitlaf, and Bethuel. Bethuel fathered Rebekah. These eight Milka bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother. Moreover, his concubine, whose name was Ruma, Boteba, Gaham, Tahash, and Maka, and that is the word of God. And um, so from what we have read, what can we observe from it? First, we see that Abraham did go, did go on to build an altar ready to sacrifice his son, as we have read in verses 9. He was very ready to sacrifice his son. And then you can also observe that Isaac did not resist much, because at that time, uh, I think Isaac was a, around a teenager, and we don't see him tussle with his dad or run away, because he was able to run away before his dad was be able to bind him. Because also Abraham was over 100 years old by this time. So Isaac still had the strength of his youth, but he still allowed his father to bind him his hands and his legs and put him on top of the altar where the the wood for the wood was already laid there um abraham was almost slaughtering his son when the angel of the lord called unto him we read that also in verses 11 that he was called abraham abraham and he said here i am and uh, we can also observe that the angel of the lord told him not to lay hand on his son and that uh, like now uh, he says in verse 12 do not lay your hand on the poor or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your, your only son for me. So he, to, he told them not, he told him not to, 
uh, lay hand or to sacrifice his son. And then we Abraham looked uh, behind him and he saw the ram uh, that to, that God had provided for him to sacrifice instead of his son. And the angel of the Lord proclaimed that now he had seen that Abraham feared God. We've seen that in verses 12. That now, by what Abraham did or was ready to do, God saw that he feared God. The, the faith of Abraham was, was displayed or was affirmed in a way. And... Um, yeah, his trust in God was also affirmed. Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide because the Lord provided for him at that place. When he was ready to sacrifice his only son, God came and showed him a ram that he would sacrifice instead. And the Lord pronounced a blessing to Abraham because he did not withhold his son. This is the same promise that he has made like two times earlier with the study of Genesis that we have just read of him, of his offspring being as multiple as the stars in the sky and the sand in the seashore. And uh, that he's telling him now, surely, surely, I will be like in verse 17. I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sun that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So here is another promise that he has made that through his, one of his offspring, the nations, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And... Um, we can also see, observe that Abraham went on to sacrifice the ram that God had provided and afterward went back home with his son and servants. So we can also conclude that it took them six days since the time they left um, their place in Beersheba to go back. So like, it was a six day thing that happened. And um, we are also introduced to the relatives of Abraham. We know that in verses uh, chapter 11, we were told to introduce to Abraham as um, yes, Abraham and his Two brothers, one of Nahor, another one of Haran. So, you know, Nahor was the one who fathered Lot, who was his nephew. We have learned about Lot. And also now we are introduced to now Haran, who nothing was mentioned about him until now, like since chapter 12. And they were both um, sons of, yeah, they were both sons of Terah. That is what, yeah, in chapter 11. So now we are introduced to the lineage, the other family of Abraham through Haran, and we know that later on Rebecca will be the wife of Isaac, his son. And that is what we can observe from the passage today. What then can we learn from what um, from what we have observed? Firstly, we see that Abraham was fully prepared and ready to sacrifice his own son. Like he had bound him, he had put him on top of the of the altar. He had already built the altar and put the and placed the firewood and was ready to cut. <laughs> cut his throat so that he may die and that he may sacrifice his only son to God. We know that past in our past study that his firstborn son Ishmael was sent away from home and he was sent in, a, in such a way that he, he there was no possibility of him come, ever coming back again. That's why now Isaac is considered as his only son and also Isaac was the son of promise. Then he was not aware that there was a ram stuck in the bushes. He did not see it until God called unto him, until the Lord called unto him. And we are told that Isaac must have been terrified, but he too knew the Lord and was ready to offer himself as a sacrifice. As I have said, Isaac at this point was not a child or a baby. He was a grown man who was able to walk for three days and also walk up a hill and also was able to carry and help his father and was also able to have a conversation with his father. So it means that this was someone who knew what was happening, but still he did not resist it because he himself was ready to be offered a sacrifice to God. We can tell, we can see from that that Abraham had introduced his son Isaac to the God that he served, so that he knew that the word of God cannot be annulled. All the word of God, you cannot turn back from the word of God. That's why he was ready to, because he himself, as Isaac, knew God for himself and was ready to be the sacrifice. At an opportune time, the Lord interrupted Abraham, telling him not to sacrifice his son. We know here it is being. We are told that the angel of the Lord said, but from from the from the quotation, it is the angel of the Lord speaks like as, as if he is the Lord himself because he's not saying the Lord said, or oh, the Lord did this and this and this. We are just told he said, do not lay your hand. Like he, the angel of the Lord here is speaking in an imperative way, which means that what this right, what, uh, what it means is that it was Jesus Christ who was speaking, not an angel, because an angel would have said, the Lord God has said, or the Lord God have said this and this. But also we see it in verse 16, where the angel of the Lord uh, tells Abraham, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord. You know, 
because you have done this and have not withheld your son your own side i will surely bless you so he speaks in a personal from a personal point of view and also he is speaking in an imperative way meaning that it could meaning that it is highly likely that this angel of the lord that they are writing here about is actually god himself and you can also learn that abraham passed his test of faith Abraham showed that he loved God more than his own family, more than his own son, beloved son, more than um, the time that he took, the years that he took to wait for this son to come. We know even now he was sacrificing his son Isaac. Sarah had no clue about it, was not aware about it. He was not, she was not con uh, consulted or involved in any of it. But we see that here he is showcasing that he is ready to sacrifice his own son despite of his family despite of what will come afterwards the aftermath of him doing this so he showed that he loved god more than his own family and then abraham believed god that god would provide and his faith was proven right you know when isaac asked him in verses in verses seven like i behold the fire and the wood but there is no lamp what but where is the lamb for a burnt offering abraham said god will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering my son so we see he had that faith that god will provide and god did provide so his faith that the faith that he had for god, for god or towards god was proven right when the ram was provided by god abraham did not withhold anything from god he completely surrendered everything like he was I've given you my life. I will also give you my son. That is a sign of surrender. He was ready to surrender completely all that he had for the sake of God. And Abraham taught his son well about the God he served. As I've mentioned earlier, that Isaac did not resist, meaning that he knew the God that his father Abraham served. And also he himself served that God. And he was ready to, uh, and he had reverence for God and respect and honor for God that he was ready, he himself to be sacrificed. Um, for God. And um, God repeated unto Abraham the promise he had made to him earlier uh, and the promise of him having many offspring and also telling him another blessing of him, uh, his offspring being a blessing through his offspring, the many nations of the earth would be blessed. And he also did that swearing by his name, meaning that since I am using my own name, I cannot go against my own word. So telling, assuring Abraham that what I have said, what I have promised to you is true. And then the dealings that Abraham had with God was personal and private. Sarah has not been mentioned in all these occurrences I've mentioned before. And the brother of Abraham, Nahor, still lived on the land of Ur. So we know that um, Lot disappeared or he went to the mountains and that's how how, that's the story that that's how his story ends with him and his daughters and his two grandsons were actually his children also uh, Ammon and Moab and that is how his story ends and he is told about another family of his that probably he had forgotten or he had not been in contact with for a very long time that they are still alive and his father Haran has had children and uh, grandchildren also because actually Milka was not cousin to Isaac not Milka, Rebecca was not cousin to Isaac. She, she, she was the child of his, of Isaac's cousin. Like we're told that one of the children of uh, of Haran, or, or not Haran, Nahor, one of the children of Nahor was Bethuel. And we're told that Bethuel fathered Rebecca. So that Bethuel was cousin to Isaac, and then Rebecca, I don't know how, how, that, how we'll call that, was a child to his cousin. But uh, yes, we'll get to that later on in the study of them. Genesis. Then from what we have learned, how can we apply it to our day-to-day -day life? Uh, we can Firstly, the Lord will surely provide even in the impossible scenarios. Like in the part where Abraham was just ready, holding his life, ready to cook his son, God called unto him. So even in the impossible scenarios, at that point, probably Abraham, if I was Abraham, as I walk up the hill with my son, I'll be like, where, where will I see the ram? Where will I see the ram? Or then where will I see the lamb of offering? Maybe it will happen, happen here, here, or to appear here. Then he reached at the top. There was no ram. He didn't see any. Then it was like, as I'm building this altar, putting a stone, a block of stone on top of the other, maybe God will provide at this point, but nope. And then he put on the wood. He was like, maybe God will provide at this time. Nope. Then he tied his own son. He was like, probably may God will provide at this time, but nope. Then he had to raise his stand. His son lift him up and put him on top of the altar. And still, God did not prevent it. But at the time he took the knife and he was about to, God came. So 
the Lord will surely provide even in the impossible scenarios. When you're like, okay, now God, there is no lamb coming. <laughs> there is no lamb coming, but now it's only my son. But at that moment, God showed up. And then trust the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. If Abraham was to think in the human way, he would not have gone ahead and sacrificed his son or would not have gone ahead and want or desired or and be ready to sacrifice his own son because it, uh, because in the human understanding, like I have only this son, what will happen now? I will have no heir. Now it will be my servant who will be now the heir of all of all my things. But he trusted God. He still told his son as they were going up the hill, God will provide. And then we can also apply uh, that uh, we should be ready to be spent and spend for God. Like be ready to spend, like use your resources. For the sake of God, for the sake of the growth of the kingdom of God, or for the work of God, and also be ready to be spent to yourself, like your energy, your your time, everything that includes you can be spent also for God. As Abraham, he was ready to be spent and spent for God. And then trouble may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So that when you see this trouble, you think that it will last forever, but it will not last forever. God will show up, and in the morning you see the light of God. Like Abraham saw the light of God at the very last second, the light of God came. God will give you the strength to endure the test of faith. You know, for him, for Abraham to walk from Beersheba all the way to the mountains or the place in Moriah for three days, it took a lot of faith. And that was his test. His faith was being tested. Him leaving his house, carrying wood, carrying fire and taking his son with him and walking for three days to go to sacrifice his son and being ready to build that altar and build it and put woods on and put woods and put his own son there that is his faith being tested and he and that uh, faith required strength because not anybody can just do that if you do not you do not have the strength of god you cannot just do that it takes strength to do all that for God and with that we can apply to ourselves that God will give us strength to endure the test of faith will give us the strength to endure the test of faith and finally we can apply that God will surely bless you for your faithfulness to him he will surely bless us you know um, Abraham proved himself to be faithful before God and God told him that I will surely and also I will I swear by my name that the many offspring as as much as um, the many offspring as the no, let me say my name. <laughs> uh, where he tells him about um, multiplying your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, like with him um, proving his faith or with him being in faith, God told him that. What am I saying now? Like with him, with the faithfulness that he had towards God, God um, rubber stamped the, the blessing that he had already told him that surely that offspring that he's waiting for to be as the ones that he told him that there will be as many as the stars in the heaven or as the sun in the seashore, that will surely come to pass. And through his offspring, the nations of the earth will be blessed. So learn and apply that God will surely bless you for your faithfulness. To him like it is not for in vain that you are working for god it is not in vain that you are being spent and spending you're being spent and spending for god it is not in vain god will surely bless you he always blesses his faithful servants and um yes that is uh the word for today from the study of genesis if there's anything else that you can add on to it we should write it down in the comment section and i thank you for joining me today until next week when we see each other again goodbye